Hello, everyone. Welcome to Similar Web uh, webinar. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Marta Sukevich. I'm leading the global research solution at Similar Web. And I have very exciting work as every day I'm interpreting amazing data signals, digital data signals. And I could share with you the stories uh, like the two we will be speaking about today on the Shein's boom and bad path and beyond bankruptcy. So let's start it with explaining what is the concept of digital data signals. We collect a lot of very granular data points from the entire digital global uh, traffic, uh, both on the websites and apps. And when we look at the data at the very granular level, we see amazing correlation between the business performance of the companies and particular specific data points. And we see that the company's business performance, brand health or product market fit, marketing cost efficiency, or even customer monetization, retention are all correlated. And today we just want to advise you which data points should be tracked to understand and contextualize your performance and make sure that your strategy is going into the good direction and to detect if the execution is also best in a class. Now, we got inspired by the hundreds of uh, US investors and the biggest technology companies because they first adopted this method uh, in, and incorporated in uh, the process of uh, decision-taking in their companies. So one of the example is Jeffries. This is the one of the largest US investors, they discover the correlation between companies, uh, like a reported revenues and specific data points that similar web can track. And once they like discovered this correlation, they started, they set up the live tracking of these signals to know before the earning calls what the company is supposed to release. Uh, would, of course, gave them amazing competitive advantage. Another example of such a company and this uh, um, application of digital data signals is the big tech sector, like Google and other like uh, tech companies. They applied uh, uh, our tracking our digital data signals uh, to understand the market performance, to contextualize their performance on the market, but also to understand where the market is going, what's gonna happen next in terms of the both consumer trends and the market dynamics. So these were only just like, a, you know, two examples, more and more companies are trying to adopt this method. And on today's webinar, we will focus on the examples from the retail industry, uh, showing just two like a totally different stories. First one is Bed Bath & Beyond, the spectacular bankruptcy from April with some, you know, like a news and episodes from the last uh, couple of weeks with Overstock uh, buying the intellectual property and digital assets of Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, and on the other hand, we will present a Shein story, quite controversial, but very impressive uh, growth path. Uh, Chinese disruptor of the fast fashion market, very heavily AI driven. And we will go under the skin of their strategy and show how our data um, uh, can prove that they go into the good uh, direction. So starting with the bad bus and beyond. When we think about the problems of this company, we need to think about it in the context of the entire category of the entire market segment. So home uh, furnishing was peaking during the COVID when all the brick and mortar stores were closed and people could only uh, use the digital channels. At that time, really everybody was trying to uh, get the biggest piece of pie and bust the digital transformation. So just to uh, get uh, uh, to the customer's attention. But since this peak, so the high base, the demand which we measure in the traffic to all the websites in the home furnishing category was slightly decreasing. This decrease was not a big one. It was year over year at the level of 3% down. Now, 
if we think about the traffic decreasing 3%, it's year over year, it's not a drama. But of course, it's only the traffic. So it's showing that customers are interested slightly less in this category. But the main question is, do they shop? Do they buy products? And of course, here last year brought a significant drop. The converted visits year over year decreased minus 11%. That means that customers uh, struggling financially touched by the inflation, cost of living crisis, were thinking twice before taking any purchase decision. Now, when we look at the particular players in the category, we can see that not everybody uh, had the same drop in the converted visits. Uh, what you could spot that Bed Bath & Beyond had minus 26%, which was uh, significantly um, worse than the industry average, minus 11% was the average number. But of course, there were players that were doing uh, even worse, like overstock.com. However, there were players like Kohl's or Target and Walmart. Here, we only took a relevant segment of the websites, like the furniture and home decoration, that noticed only you know, uh, 13, 14, 16% of uh, the decrease in the converted visits. So we could clearly see that something was definitely uh, going wrong with Bed Bath & Beyond. Then it's only the converted visits from the web. When we looked at the app, we were trying to answer the question, maybe they were doing you know, much better job in terms of the monetization through their app, but that was not the case. When you look at this graph, it's showing you monthly active users of the apps together Android and iOS in the US to total digital visitors taken from both web and app. In this case, we could see that Bed Bath & Beyond uh, had less than 10% their digital customers using their app, which was the worst um, actually result in the entire category. Uh, and at the same time, what we noticed was also the alarming trend that the app usage was 47% down in the last two years. App adoption is very important for the retailers. They see uh, better loyalty, better retention, and also they can monetize better the, uh, the customers which are using the app instead of the web. So this trend was kind of alarming. Now, we were trying to think if the company has a decreased number of the converted visits and the decreased number of the app usage, probably the strategy should be to invest more in the customer acquisition. And we were trying to look at the uh, tra paid traffic, paid spend um, across the entire category. And we actually discovered that Bed Bath & Beyond was spending the least in the Q4 uh, of the last year. So the moment when everybody really should focus uh, the advertising budgets and investments, because this is the biggest opportunity to monetize. And everybody should try to be at the top of the customer's mind and remind the message about the offering. What you could see uh, looking at other competitors, of course, like uh, not everybody was heavy spending like calls. Uh, some of uh, the players were spending in an inefficient way. So the growth uh, was not like a coming with the spend. But what we can see that for sure Bed Bath & Beyond was not uh, spending uh, enough to acquire more customers. Then we were thinking maybe they haven't spent enough, but maybe their uh, investments were very efficient. So we were trying to look at all the converted visits versus the all visits coming from the paid media in Q4. And here again, we could see that even the tiny investments were not monetized in an efficient way, what means that it's either like a, you know, like a wrong uh, marketing mix or maybe like a not perfect product market fit. From the media releases, we know that Bed Bath & Beyond at some point focused on the premium products uh, and killed their private uh, labels business line, which also was not a perfect move uh, in the last year when customers were trying to 
uh, uh, to look for the cheaper alternatives. I see there are questions coming in the Q&A. I'm happy to take them right after the, uh, the story in the end of uh, our meeting. So then we were thinking, okay, maybe uh, this is a strong brand. This is like a large omnichannel giant and they actually don't need to advertise so much because you know, like everybody knows them. Their brand is strong. Everybody crosses uh, the, the store with the large logo. So we don't need to remind about the brand all the time using the uh, paid media. But actually we were quite surprised looking at the branded search volume uh, in proportion to the direct traffic to the website, uh, spotting that Bed Bath & Beyond had the lowest uh, brand strength comparing to competitors from the same category uh, who were the same as Bed Bath & Beyond omnichannel retailers. You can see them with the uh, red uh, rings on the bubbles on the chart. Overstock had slightly like a smaller numbers, but still we can see that Bed Bath & Beyond uh, didn't have an amazing results here. And uh, how the story ended up, you all probably uh, are quite familiar. The bankruptcy uh, was announced in April. Uh, what we were uh, looking at, we were looking at um, uh, our data, uh, converted visits quarterly, digital converted visits quarterly. We were comparing them to the, uh, the earning calls, so the numbers reported, but bed, bath, and beyond uh, from the entire omnichannel sales. And what you can see on the slide is that these two lines are really correlated, showing the 45% year-over-year decrease versus minus 41% year-over-year in the own reported numbers, even if the digital sales was only 20 7% of the total sales, but this entire trend and decline is uh, amazingly correlated with the number. What leads us to the conclusion that, you know, like nowadays digital transformation is, is absolutely the must. And if you cannot lead the digital channel, you also are um, quite uh, at the risk of losing your business at all. Now, the story, of course, has like new episodes. Uh, when Bed Bath & Beyond announced the bankruptcy, all the retailers from the category were, of course, thinking, okay, who's gonna capture the market shares? Um, last year, Bed Bath & Beyond, when we look at the share in the converted desktop visits, uh, had nearly 9% of the market shares, uh, while Overstock had uh, a bit less than 4%. Now, when you look at the data from January to May, you could see that Bed Bath & Beyond market share dropped to 3%, which is natural because like the company um, stopped uh, like a deliver uh, in April. Uh, but at the same time, you could also observe who won, who increased the market share over this time. And the winner was Wafer uh, with 17% market shares last year. Uh, increased to 25% when you look at the first five months of 23. However, it was actually Overstock that won the auction for uh, Bed Bath & Beyond brand, business data, and digital assets uh, with like a not impressively high um, uh, cost they paid for that. But what was quite a surprise uh, was that they announced the rebranding. So as you probably remember, the brand of Bed Bath & Beyond was not significantly stronger comparing to Overstock, but still that was uh, an interesting direction for them because like as they claimed, they internally were thinking about the rebranding for a while. So this is the story of Bed Bath & Beyond. And of course it's a, you know exciting story to, uh, to track, but at the same time, it's giving us a great lesson and an inspiration what, uh, how to correlate the data and what to monitor in turbulent times. This is the challenge of many companies right now with the customers being more price sensitive uh, and with the, the entire categories uh, going down. So what we should look at in the turbulent times. 
First, like a monitoring the brand strength is always a great idea in both um, down market and up market. Strong brands are uh, in particular important during the crisis because they are perceived as crisis resistant. And wh whoever has like a strong brand could even uh, consider um, decreasing the level of uh, the marketing paid investments. Uh, one of the examples of, uh, uh, of this is Airbnb. They even announced uh, last year that uh, their brand building investments paid off and they right now don't need to overpay for the paid traffic acquisition. Second most important thing right now, whenever you fight for the marketing budget with any uh, CFO or procurement team is the cost efficiency. It's time for the efficient growth and the time of proving to any other stakeholders in the companies, we spend money in the most efficient way in our industry. And we could analyze a proportion of paid spend to the growth of a traffic and the converted uh, traffic dynamics. So just to show that our performance is the best uh, under this KPI. Uh, the third component is the customer engagement. Of course, in the times when uh, acquiring like a customer costs money and we need to cut and we need to do uh, more with less, uh, just investing in the retention and loyalty might pay off much better because it's always cheaper than a new customer acquisition. And here, uh, benchmarking and monitoring app adoption, but also audience exclusivity, audience loyalty, uh, as well as the time customers engage with uh, our e-commerce platform or with our brand online gives us an amazing uh, context for the customer engagement and uh, can like uh, and this can give you the comparison to your competitive uh, data set. And last but not least, monetization efficiency, like uh, ROI is the key uh, at uh, like you know at any hard time whenever um, uh, other stakeholders in the companies are uh, evaluating all the budgets a couple of times. So monitoring of the converted visits or the subscription uh, growth performance uh, against the market uh, in the context of the money invested in the paid customer acquisition could give us an amazing output. Now, who is the winner during these turbulent times? Like we, we can see some uh, market segments are going down other market segments uh, are going up and each crisis is actually an amazing opportunity for like a new brands to grow. And we will just show the rise of one of them, uh, Shein, uh, the company which is very controversial, uh, mostly in the context of the, you know, environmental concerns. Uh, but from the perspective of the business model and from the perspective of um, their marketing strategy, I think they're absolutely uh, are worth our attention. Uh, Shein is being named the TikTok of e-commerce, so like a Chinese disruptor of the fast fashion industry with a revenue um, projected to double uh, to nearly $60 billion uh, within just two years. That would be more than Asian Dem and Zara altogether which is kind of impressive. Uh, and to give you some numbers from the US market, right now Shein is number one app in the US fashion category. 9% of Americans use the app either on iOS or on Android. It's number two websites in the US fashion category by traffic size, growing actually faster than any uh, competitor and faster than the category average. And what, um, what many of us uh, are not aware of is that this is the number one site, not only among the Generation Z, but also, for instance, within the 35 to 54 age group. So it's not a brand we should associate only with uh, teenagers. It's actually uh, a brand that managed to, um, to expand to other age groups as well. Uh, and when you look at the brand strength quadrant uh, for the Shein and competitors from the fast fashion category, you could see that right now already, this is the brand with the highest branded search volume. 
uh, higher than the omnichannel giants like Gap, like Agent M or Zara, uh, but also you know being very uh, uh, relatively high in the context of the direct traffic. But let's uh, remember that this is the website's traffic, while they of course have an amazing app adoption. So we should think about this brand being like an app first and app strong, but very often being searched for in uh, the search engines. Why they have such a high number of the branded search? It's, uh, uh, it's, it happens just only thanks to the uh, digital only marketing strategy with um, heavy influencer marketing investment. And we could also see it in our data because 22% of their traffic is coming from social. It's also uh, the, the player that is very uh, aggressive and successful in the customer acquisition. So you could see it's absolutely a growth oriented brand. They invest a lot in the PPC spend uh, and they are the only one um, uh, who can notice a growth. So all other players actually, uh, when you, we looked at the six months from November to April, uh, comparing to the previous six months, all the players noticed the decline and only Shein actually um, increased the traffic by 15%. So you could think it's a growth uh, at any cost, uh, but actually this is a growth uh, and the investment which are quite well calculated uh, because Shein has absolutely the best monetization efficiency in the entire category and also is able to really convert many more visits than any app anybody else in the market you could see on the chart they just play in a different league uh, so the previous one was from the paid search this uh, slide is showing the converted visits from social media with slightly lower conversion rate because many of the social media investments which are uh, here uh, aggregated with paid organic and influencer marketing would result with the branded search not with the direct conversions but still you could see that they are doing the best uh, job comparing to anybody else in their competitive environment. Now, if you think that Shein has like a super cheap uh, apparel and you think about the price per unit, you could think, is this company even profitable? And the question, the, the answer is yes. So they have the profitable growth. Uh, so that's uh, quite uh, interesting. And this is because they managed uh, to find many uh, cost efficiency. First of all, in the process, they design and produce their clothes, uh, but also because having products so cheap, they do not have the problem of the returns. So here you could see a chart of Shein compared to ASOS uh, with the share of the segment we call the return. So when people are returning back the purchases, uh, when you look at the ASOS, you could see that it's around 8% right now. So 8% of all the visits are the visits to the return section. It used to be much worse. It used to be around 15%. Right now it dropped to 8%. Shein keeps the returns at the level below 3%. Uh, which is, of course, like a super low number in the fashion category. Here, we need to be aware that in the fashion category, uh, many customers would use BNPL to try many things and not necessarily really buy them in the end of the day. So order many things, use the BNPL option, try everything at home, and even send everything back without really paying for that. Uh, from our report we published a couple of months ago, we know that 26% of 18, 24 years old declared that their main reason to use BNPL is to try before uh, buy, which is much higher comparing to any other age group. What is the business impact of that? When ASOS recently reported uh, their financial results, they claimed they identified 6% of their active customers with a negative impact on profitability, uh, which was like a, you know, quite well measured and uh, the sum was 100 million British pounds. So this was the cost of 6% of the customers 
um, uh, using a lot of uh, 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 BNPL together with the return, uh, free return option. Now, if we think about what is next for Shein, like it's easy to grow from the small base. Uh, at some point when you reach uh, like a critical mass, it's much harder to grow more. And we already started to observe kind of a stagnation in the converted visits when we were looking, for instance, um, at April and May data versus March this year, we even saw a slight decline in digital traffic and the total stagnation in the converted visits. But when we looked, for instance, at the app figures, we saw that the app usage increased by 16% in the same period of time. It's not the growth rate they used to have one or two years ago, but still there is a growth when everybody else is rather declining. Now, what is the solution for them is they need to step into the niche segments. So for example, we were looking at the specific um, uh, segments uh, in the context of what is converting for them, like male accessories or plus size uh, segment. And they were, of course, representing quite tiny share of the total traffic, but we also saw that they converted at the level of 12 to 16%. So it means that they are looking for many niche segments that could actually not maybe grow, like grow amazingly in terms of the traffic, but in terms of the revenue and the monetization, they are focusing on the best converting ones. And it's worth mentioning that as Shein has totally AI generated process of product design, but also taking the picture. So every piece of apparel you see at Shein uh, was uh, the, the algorithm decision to produce these shorts or this t-shirt based on uh, uh, the number of clicks and conversions. Uh, and all the pictures you see are uh, presented on the AI generated models. Uh, uh, so, so if you think that this process is fully automated, that this is amazing efficiency, which is also like a bit scary because fashion design used to be something uh, like a, you know, very exciting, very beautiful and at the level of art. And here we have just like a bot looking that, you know, t-shirts with bananas are converting quite well. So the bot will design 100 other t-shirts with other fruits. Uh, but sometimes you could see the trap of this model. And this is the real picture uh, taken from the main uh, website of the main apparel at Shein, which uh, was, you know, just like a, it's, it's uh, uh, obviously um, kind of a trap of the algorithm because maybe people were clicking for this type of pictures for joke. Maybe people were buying even this type of uh, uh, men shorts for joke, but this is not uh, essentially what probably the brand would love to be associated with. Now, to uh, conclude these two stories, what we can learn from uh, a company that is uh, going through like a lot of turbulences, of course, monitoring uh, the cost and the monetization efficiency is the key on one end, just to know that we are the most efficient spender in the category. On the other end, to be able to prove to other stakeholders in our organization that we uh, do spend money with a good efficiency, with the best efficiency in the entire market. Uh, so in the end of the day, to still get the budget for the next quarter and being able to acquire customers in the most critical seasons like the Q4. Uh, from the Shein story, of course, we could learn we should all the time look at the most efficient and fastest growing companies using in particular branded search, but also the share of spend and the conversion rates trying to reverse engineer um, their uh, growth. But of course, what was working quite well for these two retailers doesn't need to work for everybody else. And we uh, like uh, we believe there are so many business, different business models uh, in the retail industry and out of the retail industry that the best way is just to look for the correlation between specific digital data signals and the KPIs that would define the success in your category in the best way. And once you find these correlations, you find this like, you know, specific data point that should be tracked, we can help you to set up the tracking of the market shares of your ranking position, 
competitors' activities within the defined uh, KPIs. And we believe we are uniquely positioned to answer these most critical questions because similar web collects uh, online behavioral data, both pre and post purchase. We have full view of the market, including uh, nearly all the countries in the world, uh, as well as both desktop, mobile web and apps. Uh, we have very granular data points, which uh, makes the insights you can drive out of them very actionable. And last but not least, you can uh, get the updates in the near in near real time, which is of course uh, critical in the fast changing world. So this is uh, the story I wanted to share with you right now. I'm very uh, happy to open the Q and A session, and I see the the, the question already asked earlier by uh, Larissa, is there a publicly available case study for Jeffrey's correlation analysis between digital data signals and business performance? I don't think there is like a publicly available case study, but what I can tell you is that uh, like a, most of the, you know, big investors uh, use similar web data to do this. And we do have a lot of available case studies showing the earning calls versus uh, correlation with our digital data points. We even have a specific webinar uh, each year before the earning call season. We are showing uh, uh, even somehow forecasting the performance of the companies to be announced at the quarterly uh, earning calls. So this is uh, something we, we do have and we could follow up, Larissa, just to share with you uh, links and invite you to this uh, type of webinar. If there are no more questions, I'm, uh, I would like to thank you for staying with me for this last 30 minutes and listening to this story. If any more questions are going to cross your mind later, feel free to approach us uh, uh, you could um, uh, go through your similar web uh, account manager, uh, or you could just like, you know, speak to us as a follow-up message after this webinar. Uh, the recording will be available in a couple of days, and uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn and send any follow-up uh, question if you have any. Many thanks for everyone to part for participating and being with me today and uh, see you soon, hopefully at the next webinars. Thank you.